when people define executives in the wrestling business as promoters, and promotion is one of the things that one does when you're heading up a wrestling company. It's a live event business. It's a television business. It's a pay-per-view business. It's a licensing and merchandising business. There are all sorts of facets to the wrestling industry and being an executive or in my case, ultimately the president of WCW, you have to have a pretty good understanding of each of those business units within the overall company. Now, my first experience with actual promotion, the very first event I ever promoted in my wrestling career was around 1988 when I worked for the AWA. Working in, in the AWA at the time was a real blessing for someone like me because I had no experience in anything outside of sales. So uh, everything was new to me. I was this malleable piece of clay that could be shaped and formed into whatever, whoever I was working for uh, felt best. And I was eager to learn. In the case of the AWA, the first event I promoted, I think, like I said, it was 87, 88, probably 88, was in Mason City, Iowa. And I had that one all by myself. It was a lot of event. And I would televise a normal house show, as we refer to them in the industry. But, and I promoted it in Mason City, Iowa. I had a great card. Big Daniel was on the card. Manny Fernandez, the Midnight Rockers, the Nasty Boys were there. A wonderful card. But knowing nothing at all, I had to learn from the ground up. I learned from Vern Gagne and Greg Gagne, Mike Shields, all of whom had a lot of promotional experience. Mike Shields worked for Jerry Jarrett for a long time. They all had a fair amount of experience and they laid out the groundwork for me. Give me my checklist of how to promote a live event. It was a great experience for me. I was excited. It was a big step forward for me. Earn got to have confidence in me to let me go out on my own. And it was additional responsibilities, which would make anybody feel good in any job. So yeah. it was all positive for me. And I learned a lot. Certainly I had guidance and mentorship along the way, but it was a real learning experience. And my experience in AWA early on in my career was similar, just like I had to learn in the live event promotion business from the ground up, kind of learn by doing. Uh, the same was true with my experience in production. I was fascinated with the process of creating a television show because as a child of the 60s, I was born in 55. I grew up when television was the centerpiece of the communal universe within most families. It's what you did in the evening when you all got done with dinner and you kind of huddled around. The only television in the house at the time, it was a luxury to have more than one. And if you had a color <laughs> television, you were the coolest family on the block. Being a product of television, by the time I got to AWA in my early 30s, I had matured a lot and getting involved and interested in many different things, but television was still a big part of our lives. It still is today. Different form, but still is. And I was fascinated with the fact that I didn't know how the fuck it worked. Right. How did you get those people on those screens? How does the audio come? To, how does it all work? It's a lot like a microwave, Jack. Absolutely. Do you know how it works? Not at all. Do you use it? Often. All right. It's a perfect example. And right. you're like probably 99.9% .9 of the rest of the population that has a microwave. Everybody uses them. Some people on a daily basis, some people several times a day. Nobody knows how they work. Well, I had to know how microwave ovens worked. So before I ever got into wrestling, I met somebody who worked for a microwave manufacturing company. And I spent an evening, I took like two beers and a, <laughs> and a, a dinner at uh, Denny's uh, for this person to explain to me just how microwaves work. Now, fast forward, I'm in AWA and I go into the post-production facility and I see this big edit board and this big switcher and all these monitors. I was like a, a production assistant, but I got to sit in the truck, which was like, Starship Enterprise. I was on the right. deck next to Captain Kirk. In this case, it was my Shields, the show's director. I got to watch him, you know, call the camera shots as they were happening live. It was all so overwhelmingly cool to me and fascinating because I'd never been exposed to that. 
here I'm beginning to learn not just theoretically how television works, but being in the truck, watching it being assembled as it's actually happening in real time. That only piqued my interest. And then I had to know, okay, you shot all this footage, you got all these camera shots, you got your rough cut, because it wasn't a live show, that particular show was a tape show. Now what do you do with it? Well, because it was AWA, because it was a small company, I got to sit inside the post-production facility and watch how a show is assembled from raw footage. Well, now that I knew how it worked, I wanted to learn how to do it. In my free time, when I wasn't doing my day job, which was essentially sales and marketing, I would go in in the evenings. There was a guy there, Polish Joe. His name was Joe Chu. He taught me fundamentals of how to edit a show and how to mix audio and how to dump tapes. And you've got 147 television. Well, we didn't have that many at the time. Maybe 127. But you've got 127 television stations around the upper Midwest that want a copy of that show. How do you do that? Well, I learned how to duplicate tapes or dump tapes. I got to learn the fundamentals of a very important aspect of the wrestling industry. So you go back to my first day on the job, I was good at sales and learned a lot about the television industry and understand what I was selling and how it related to a potential buyer, but that didn't take long. Here I am a year and a half into the job, having zero experience other than being a fan. And I have a good understanding a year and a half later of the sales and syndication, advertising and sponsorship business, because I was interested in the production side of things. I had a fundamental understanding of how the production side of things work. I had a pretty good understanding of how the live event side of the business functioned. So all of a sudden I wake up with Dana, I'm thinking, well, I've got, you know, three or four big 